Once upon a time, the Pokemon anime used to be the best thing ever. I remember those days of sweet nostalgia when I tuned in on Saturday mornings to watch Ash and his friends go on an entertaining quest to catch them all. Each successive season brought with it a fresh cast of characters and exhilarating battles to witness, with the quality of the latter improving with each and every episode. Then the true potential of the series peaked with Pokemon XYZ, with dynamic battle arenas, insane art quality, and epic fights that had Ash Greninja losing to Omega Charizard X in the Kalos League despite a clear type advantage. Those were the good times. However, dark days soon fell upon the Pokemon anime that ruined it forever. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you this abomination known as the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. I mean, look at this trash! All the characters have way less detail! Look at all these terribly drawn in between frames that look super bad when I pause my video. And you're not gonna believe this. They, they made Ash a 10 year old, mind you. Look like a 10 year old! I can't take this blasphemy anymore! Go back to the way things were! This is probably how someone really invested into the Pokemon anime might have felt after hearing the news that Sun and Moon would be an artistic departure from the original. And despite the excerpt I played from Pokemon Chat 69, there are people who are going to have preferences between the original art direction and new art direction of the Pokemon anime for various reasons. Regardless, I believe it can be agreed upon that each carries specific benefits and drawbacks that facilitate the work that animators do on the show. I bring this up because Haikyuu's latest season has undergone an identical shift. Gone is the rougher, mature character design in favor of a brighter one that is more faithful to the manga's artwork. Comparing Hinata before and after exemplifies these changes, with his new look featuring a more petite face and simpler hair. Expectedly, there were hesitations from anime fans in particular about the change, and it's honestly not hard to blame them. Not only have we become accustomed to three seasons of this, Meanwhile, the closest thing we've gotten to resembling those shots are these. If there's anything to take away from this, the first three seasons of Haikyuu are more cinematic, with a particular emphasis on intense line art and fantastic cinematography to make those Oikoa serves even more epic. As with any anime that experiences big changes like this, there are clear reasons for them. And as some of us have learned, change can definitely be for the better and for the worse. Therefore, I want to tackle two big questions today. First, why does Haikyuu to the top look different from past seasons? And second, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the new look? Let's start with the first one, which I can explain in one sentence. Look at all these weirdly drawn frames! They must have lost their b -b -b budget N no no no. Calm down, Pokemon Chat69. Just just go sit in the corner for now, please. In reality, Haikyuu's new style can be attributed to staff changes and a shift in philosophy on the part of Production IG. See, Production IG can be considered the king of sports anime. From Kuriko's basketball to Welcome to the Ballroom to Run with the Wind, IG has developed a reputation for adapting interesting sports stories with painstaking quality and undeterred ambition. For the longest time, we became accustomed to two core runs of these series with an unwavering commitment to emulating the featured sports with a striking blend of realism and expressionism. As someone who ran cross country in high school, I can immediately tell that the team studied the anatomy and movement of runners for Running with the Wind because the translation to the anime was impeccable. The fluid and consistent movement of the legs across the ground, the steady gaze looking ahead on the road, nothing I've seen compares to Run with the Wind's running animation, which is why I actually need to finish the show and not get distracted from other things. Sports enthusiasts of any kind can attest to that beautiful feeling of seeing a sport you understand depicted with such care. But of course, this comes at a cost. Producing quality animation is expensive, sometimes because of the finances, but more probably because of time. Welcome to the Ballroom went through some production troubles that could be attributed to this high quality benchmark, which came to a head in Run of the Wind that required the show to be taken off the air to recoup some of its production time. There's a simple explanation for this. Higher detail makes animation harder because it requires animators to account for more factors. Yet Production IG has strived to have their cake and eat it too, often finding great success with this approach. But within an industry synonymous with tight production schedules, overwork, and low wages, change would need to happen at even the most talented animation studios. With Haikyuu to the top, it is quite likely that the simplification of the character designs was done to reduce the burden on the animators and expedite production in the long term especially assuming that the show gets adapted to the very end. 
This ties into the idea of staff changes as well, because one might assume that Haikyuu's character designer has changed. They haven't. Takehiro Kishida remains on board in this role, meaning that the shift to a more faithful art style was an intentional one rather than a necessity. Art director Ichiro Tatsuta is still contributing to the general aesthetic of the series as well. Nothing seems out of the ordinary, right? Not quite. Haikyuu to the top went through a few key staff changes that would have a resounding impact, more than I could cover within this video. But let's look at a couple of them. For one, the director is different. Susumu Mitsunaka does not reprise his role of three seasons, likely because he went on to direct the Layton's Mystery Journey anime for 50 episodes. It intersected with the beginning of To the Top's production, so he was likely too busy to return to what was unarguably his magnum opus. His directorial effort shaped the narrative and visual identity of the series, aligned with the talent of production IG to deliver upon that vision with his team. Our new director is Masako Soto, a production IG familiar with prior experience in Haikyuu. In fact, she was the episode director and storyboarder on THAT episode. She's definitely qualified. Not to mention, she did a key animation on Studio Ghibli movies? Like... That said, this is only her second directorial debut, which might come with a few growing pains that were evident in To The Top's first half as it tried to re-establish itself. Heading into next season, some of those issues will likely be addressed in one of the most exciting matches in the entire series. However, the most obvious difference appears to lie with the chief animation director role. Chiba Takahiro has consistently blown it out of the park through the first three seasons of Haikyuu, setting high expectations for the team and personally living up to them. And some of his scenes are nothing short of iconic for Haikyuu fans across the world. Another notable contributor was action animation director Yasuyuki Kai, who scarily intense shots pushed the boundaries of the animation and had me putting episodes on repeat just to watch his work time and time again. In perhaps the biggest shift, however, neither one of them hold their same positions anymore. The responsibility of Chief Animation Director has fallen into the hands of Yu Kobayashi. Just like Sato, they've been involved with Haikyuu for some time, and this new position is a huge step up from their original one. They've also done this one cut that looks amazing, cause look at that food. Which is to say, I'm not too familiar with their work, but I'm willing to bet they can bring an interesting flair to Haikyuu going forward. And just to clarify, Chiba Takahiro and Yasuyuki Kai still contributed some of their talent to To The Top. The former did key animation for the opening, and the latter gave our resident <laughs> boy the justice he deserved with this fantastic line shot. It might not be reminiscent of his regular style, but the animation is impressive nevertheless. Which brings me to the advantages and disadvantages in animating in this new style. And there honestly aren't too many disadvantages, but the most striking one really comes down to the details. Comparing these photos reveals the key differences from the original series to, to the top. There are stronger colors now, less hat shading, simpler body proportions, smaller giraffe necks. Anime watchers became so accustomed to the original style that it was a harsh transition to witness its new approach. The original is certainly more realistic looking, and that was a huge source of its appeal. Choosing to make its shift a little over halfway through the series also means that the series will look inconsistent for viewers getting into high queue now. Ultimately it will come down to personal preference, but it is clear that the reduced detail from frame to frame will be missed. Fortunately, the new art style is much more flexible than before in delivering spectacular animation. One thing I noticed this season was how much more motion is present. Two of my favorite cuts in the entire series have to lie with Hoshiumi's monstrous display of volleyball power at Nationals and Nekoma's match against Kiyokawa. The action is much faster, frantic, and fun, infusing these scenes with their own personalities that serve to underscore Hoshiumi's unrivaled skill and Nekoma's tenacity respectively. And don't even get me started on the kinetic BAM jump, or the way the ball occasionally contracts into the ground before bouncing away after someone hits it. You could loop these again and again, and I'd never get tired of it. Sure, it might not have the cinematic flair of the past three seasons, but the craft is still there. And with two of the top second chord dropping around the time this video goes out, I am willing to bet that it will live up to its name and reach the top. A couple quick notes before I end this video. There are so many animators that I didn't manage to cover in this video, and in the future I'll do my best to put the spotlight on as many as possible. Second, Watch To The Top this season, 
COVID-19 forced the show to delay its second half, and going forward, it will become even more important that we support the shows we love. Anyways, thank you for taking time to watch this video. Please like this video and subscribe to Sakamui if you enjoyed this video, and hope to see more weekly content from me. With that, I'll be going to cheer on the beautiful Mia twins making their debut together. <laughs> Or maybe not. Thanks once again, and I'll see you all next week.